Good morning. Welcome to the uh, 21st day of November 2016 and the uh, good life meditation for this day. It's safely back out of this spot. Can't see very well. I had actually some rain last night. Very rare thing. A lot of rain last night. Very rare thing for here here in Southern California. Anyway, before I get started, um, I read an interesting uh, article yesterday on uh, Flipboard about um, the impact of uh, mindfulness meditation on the brain. Some scientific research um, using before and after scans of the brain and then uh, comparing the control group with the study application group discovered that uh, there's demonstrable uh, change in the brain structure, actually a uh, density of gray matter with uh, individuals who perform a daily uh, <clears throat> mindfulness meditation, which is mindfulness is similar, kind of similar to what I'm doing here in a way, in terms of uh, uh, trying to make ourselves more cognitively uh, aware of what we're doing and thinking about and, and the, the, uh, our, our choices. And um, turn that, there we go. <clears throat> and uh, what I found was really interesting was that the uh, test group was uh, meditating, doing this mindfulness meditation for an average of 27 minutes a day. <laughs> and it only the change was demonstrable in six weeks, which uh, is striking because uh, for me personally, as uh, I, I do this for about thirty minutes a day, and I've been doing it for about a year now, uh, especially like a very uh, uh, targeted way for about six months, and very very deliberate for like the last three months. And I would say that, yeah, I've noticed a, a demonstrable change, uh, to use that word again, in my uh, my behavior. The study actually related the parts of the brain that were impacted. I can't remember what it said, but they uh, you, we, have, we have some idea about some general mapping of what the brain functions do. And it had more to do with um, <clears throat> areas of the brain that uh, help us to re be aware of uh, our surroundings and uh, Oh, I can't remember what the rest was, but it seems that this type of stuff has an effect. So with that, uh, some, uh, some more rationale to uh, continue doing this. Let's begin. <clears throat> I flipped things around a bit. Um, having a little trouble with uploading videos. Uh, not uploading, but uh, making videos. My uh, computer seems to be on the fritz a bit, so I don't know if this will ever get uploaded, but at least it'll get recorded uh, and set aside. So I've, I've, I've uh, topsy-turvy made my, uh, my principles a little bit. I've added two, incorporating uh, one of them as a sub-principle and uh, adding, adding a new one. So I'm now up to 11 principles. Let's begin. First, uh, the uh, affirmation of human and civil rights. Individuals must be protected from, uh, in, the, well, the well-being of individuals must be protected from the pursuit of the well-being of the many by uh, <clears throat> recognizing and affording uh, human rights to individuals as well as civil rights to, to these society's smaller groups. <clears throat> this way we can um, do the most good without uh, doing so at the expense of the, of the few. Next, uh, let's get on to the three objectives. The first of these is the objective of the development and maintenance of good sound principles. I do that through this daily exercise where I uh, uh, list out my principles, discuss them briefly or not so briefly, and uh, carry on. And it's really interesting how this stuff lingers in the brain through the day and really does seem to have an impact on me. <clears throat> oh, here we go. Turn that, change the temperature. Two, the uh, second objective is the uh, um, execution of good emotional reactions throughout the day to. Uh, when things rise in my breast, anxiety arises, or frustration, anger, lust, even at my age, whatever the case may be, that I, uh, I, I nibble at it uh, instead of wolfing it down and then uh, <clears throat> respond in a more measured and deliberate fashion. Three, the uh, <clears throat> performance of good actions, doing good things, which are defined as activities and decisions in conformity with my principles. Now let's move on to the principles themselves. There are now 11. The first of these is the atomic principle. Everything in the, in the universe is bits and pieces, 
flowing and changing and transforming into new and different things, including you and me. The uh, molecules and atoms of which we are made have, have been recycled many times and are about to be recycled again. As for me, by the end of the day, uh, my death will come pretty soon. Uh, I may not even make it to work. And then uh, the uh, biodegrading uh, con fun functions of life will take over and begin to take me apart. Probably the uh, mortician will intervene and stop that process. But if I had my way, I would love to have my body uh, dumped in a remote uh, remote area of the desert. Or no, better yet, uh, given up to medical science. I like that idea best of all. Give it up to medical science. Let them do as, do as they wish. They can, they can set me up for the worst case scenario. You know, the stuff, the types of experiments that nobody wants to know actually happens to their bodies. They can do that with mine. I wish there was a category I could allow. But for, for, you know, for medical, medical experimentation in parentheses, the gross stuff. I like that idea. Because I have, I have no, I have no necessary regard or, or caring whatsoever for my corpse. And uh, I, 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 I treat it with disdain for the, uh, not even, not even, it's not even disdain. It's more like just treating it like rubbish. Because uh, everything that I was is, is gone. Even though the circuitry is still in there, it's all turned off. It's as, it's as, uh, <clears throat> should be treated as a recyclable object. I got I down deeper into a rabbit hole there than I needed to. Okay, the second one, and this is where I have a new sub, sub, uh, a sub, uh, uh, principle. The second principle is the principle of nature. Uh, this is my first application of a sub-principle too. Uh, and I'll talk about that in just a sec. Nature, principle of nature says that everything in the universe has some nature and that uh, we live our lives better if we recognize what the nature of that thing is, including ourselves. <clears throat> my goodness, I never expected it, but I'm using this all the time. I, I'm encountering circumstance where I, I look around and I, I observe what the nature of of things in that circumstance are like the a line at the supermarket, a busy uh, a busy sh a busy shopping center parking lot, uh, the uh, the fact that my Netflix doesn't always seem to start up quite the way I like, the fact that my computer's having problems. These are the nature of these things and these places and of these of the people that I work with, and uh, recounting that for myself uh, uh, as I enter into a situation, as I walk into the fray, so to speak, driving into the parking lot, saying, "Okay, they're doing some construction at this uh, at this uh, Trader Joe's parking lot. It's going to be a crowded mess in there. I'm going to expect that and take it take it take it uh, accordingly." Um, really makes a difference. So now the uh, well, the important thing there too is to recognize our own nature so that we can live according to that. So I recognize that my it's within my nature to uh, go alone into wild places to pursue uh, to think and to pursue uh, a life of uh, courage, joy, and independence, uh, and uh, enjoy the fruits therein and the challenges that come along the way as well. It's in my nature to die at a moment's notice now. Gosh, it sounds so depressing when the way I say it. And I don't mean this to keep recounting death as a depressing theme. I, I simply do so literally as, as simply a, a reminder to myself of, of the immediacy of, of this circumstance and my need to uh, live, to not take anything for granted, not a single moment, to look deeply into my daughter's eyes, to hold my wife's hand when we're walking, to uh, to take my job seriously. If I, if I need to write down a sentence or two of thought, do it today, for there will be no tomorrow. To uh, do my good deeds, whatever they may be in the moment. Now there's a sub-principle here. This is the first time I've used constant green light. First time I've used the uh, idea of a sub-principle. Um, that's because this principle came up as uh, something that I wanted to add as a separate principle. But then I, when I when I recounted it in yesterday's meditation, I realized suddenly that it was very close. It, it was related to uh, the principle of nature. And after further deliberation, I decided to make it a sub principle. And this is the principle of uh, a human paradigm, or just paradigm. But I think human paradigm is a better description. Um, human paradigm describes that. Uh, it, it's a description of the fact that we all have a perspective, a unique perspective on the world. And uh, the, our lives represent a model and a methodology and a view that is unique to us. 
That is our personal human paradigm. Paradigms can be, the components, the pieces of paradigms can be shared with others. Um, and this would be the, the family paradigm, for example, or the friendship paradigm, or, or the uh, societal paradigm, the religious paradigm, cultural paradigm, the human paradigm, whatever the case may be. Animals have paradigm as well. I wonder if plants do. If you, need, if you need a brain to think to have a paradigm, a perspective, a view perhaps, maybe they do. Learning a lot about how plants are uh, much more, more to plants than we ever thought. But, um, or at least I ever thought. So anyway, this paradigm thing is important to me because when I meet, go to meet somebody, I have to remember that uh, they have their own paradigm, which is, uh, in a way, a reflective of their nature. And uh, I need to keep that in mind that they probably, for the most part, are striving to do good as their paradigm dictates. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of people out there that are actually contriving to do bad. Even when they do the things that we consider bad, we pro they probably think there's some good rationale behind it. Of course, there are sociopaths out there. I'm not denying that. But I think the great majority of people are, are attempting to live a virtuous life. But their paradigm may uh, hide that virtue uh, in our inability to, uh, to recognize it as such. I know that's kind of touchy-feely, but uh, there it is. I think it's a, I think it's a fact. Uh, so I'm going to try to remind myself of that, to remind myself when working and uh, interacting with others that... Uh, to try and keep in mind that they come from a different paradigm, if possible, to see their paradigm, witness the uh, application of empathy, which is a powerful force, and uh, to respond accordingly and interact accordingly. Next, uh, the uh, principle of um, the social principle. The social point. Wow, I'm just realizing paradigm has something to do with the social principle as well. well anyway, social principle. Human beings are social animals. We need one another to uh, live well, and uh, in some case, in many cases, to live at all. And it's good to uh, uh, to live towards social ends to uh, make the world a better place. Did I really mean to have that here? Because there's another principle. That maybe that's why this this sense of uh, confusion is rising in my head. There's a new principle that I want to add. I think it goes here, I think. Place it here for today anyway. That's the principle of uh, maturity. And maturity seems obvious on the, uh, on the front. Um, but I want to uh, add two sub-principles there that I think may be uh, useful in uh, laying it out. Because maturity is just one of those things you lay it out, yeah, maturity, and we all think, yeah, it's good to, if you can behave, if you can become mature and you behave in a mature manner, those are good things. But I actually want to talk more about the uh, the components, the two pieces that that, lead, that contribute to maturity. And these are, sub-principle one is uh, um, wisdom, and after that we have um, a fortitude, wisdom and fortitude. Now, wisdom and fortitude both yield qualities that are contribute to maturity that may in fact be, be maturity. Maturity may be the uh, result of applied wisdom or applied fortitude. They're very different though. Wisdom of course is not knowledge. It's distinct from that. Uh, wisdom is, is the result of, a lot of living and uh, trial and error, making mistakes and then uh, learning uh, better outcomes or better, a better way to live and then applying that. That's the key, key piece to it. You can have uh, wisdom without applying it, but who, who would? <laughs> Distinct from book learning, which uh, can also kind of look like wisdom in a way, but it's a, diff it's a different animal. Book learning is, uh, is more something we acquire through, uh, through education, whereas wisdom is, uh, is, is better ingrained in us through actual experience. The problem with wisdom is that it takes a long time to acquire, as much as a, a lifetime. It's kind of an interesting thing that we get. We be, we, if, we, if we live a deliberate life, we become most wise at the end of our lives. We don't need it much anymore because we're going to die. So that's why we have uh, the other piece of that is fortitude. Fortitude, of course, being perseverance and diligence through, uh, through difficult challenges. Now, fortitude is very interesting because you know, of the two, fortitude uh, uh, can yield uh, results that appear very much like wisdom, even in the very young. That's why we discipline soldiers uh, to, to, to exercise fortitude in challenging circumstances. This tells them that even if you don't know the reason why you need to do what you do, you're gonna, what we're telling you to do, you do it anyway. 
Uh, so you gave them some guidelines and, 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 and training them the, the fortitude to, uh, to, to follow through. And they begin to behave and, and live a life that appears more appears at one that would, someone wise would live. Even though they haven't had the experience, they may not know the exact reason why they're doing it. They're following orders, so to speak. Couple those two together with uh, uh, wisdom, uh, wisdom and fortitude, and you have a, a very formidable uh, force. You know, someone who's both has the experience, knows the reasons, and the gut stamina to push through the difficult times, that's a formidable human being. A powerful, powerful person, in fact. A very uh, mature individual. Okay, so there was that one. Next is, uh, now I went to five, which is temperance. Temperance is the uh, ability to control our consumption of uh, everything, resources, as well as emotions. Resources like food, drink, water, food, 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 drink, work, play, sex, all the like, right? exercise restraint in that regard uh, but it also relates to uh, exercise and restraint with the consumption of our emotions when anger frustration passion arises we can uh, we can nibble away at that sample it to see what it, where it's coming from and then uh, make better choices uh, about how to respond not necessarily consuming it all in one gulp next is the um, agency and indifference six agency uh, is the fact of life fact of life it is it is what it is life 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 anything that's alive is an agent it exerts some uh, some life force and will life force that sounds so wooey but it is it is a life force you and i have a life force plants have life force coyotes jackrabbits sidewinders all of the <laughs> you know orchard or pitcher plants grass you know, slime molds, they all have a, a life force in a way. I don't like the sound of that though. It just goes, strikes me the wrong way, but it's, it's true. And that's what makes it an agent. Some agents are sentient. They actually have the ability to, uh, to think uh, things out the way we do. Maybe some capacity for reason. And uh, agents are everywhere on Earth. The Earth is covered with a, a, a slime of a green, green and brown slime of agents. And, uh, and also the artifacts of those agents, the things that they, they create. I mentioned a couple of videos back about oxygen being an artifact of agency. In fact, oxygen is not, it's, it's, it's simply a, uh, uh, an element, but um, it is, on Earth, our atmosphere was replaced with uh, other, a uh, uh, former atmosphere was replaced with an oxygen rich atmosphere by the early activity of, uh, was it, was it, was of plants or bacteria? I can't quite remember. So anyway, it was an artifact in that way just by the sheer quantity of it. But things like this car, you know, my computer, this camera, all these things, they're, they're uh, artifacts of agency as well. And we com we're comforted by agents and their artifacts. And so what we do is when we're, when you take all that away, you're left with what I call the great indifference, which is everything else. The uh, the indifferent face of the universe, not even a face, the indifferent front of the universe, the indifferent uh, aspect of the universe that is quite disconcerting, quite troubling in some ways, uh, really bothers us in some ways. So what we do, excuse me, when we, uh, it's it's the root, possibly at the root of loneliness is, uh, is that yawning emptiness that we feel surrounded by indifference. So what we do to, uh, to wipe that away, to mask it, is we create uh, agents where none exist. Uh, that's witness the uh, creation of gods, god, demons, ghosts, spirits, all those types of things, which, uh, which fill, the, uh, fill the indifference with uh, a contrived agency that uh, gives us both comfort and uh, may even provide uh, meaning, uh, and almost like a parent-like figure where when we're feeling alone, watch out for it. That's a dangerous thing to uh, take, take instructions from the imaginary friends. Okay, next is uh, the seven, the best seat in the house, which is right here, right now. Best seat in the house is just my re daily reminder to uh, not want to want to be anyone else or anything else or to be doing anything else or have a different job. Not that I don't want to do those, but I don't want to want to do those. Get it? You know, double negative makes a positive. I want to be content with where I am, all the while striving to uh, improve. It's a it's a difficult thing. It's kind of like one of these 
types of things, you know. But uh, it's but it's more uh, more powerful. Uh, it actually uh, breeds contentment. Uh, I know I've been doing it now for a while, and it, it's quite so. Next is um, that was what seven. Let's see, let's go through it real quick, enumerate real quick. Uh, <clears throat> atomic principle, nature, social. Maturity, temperance, did I say agency and indifference? The best seat in the house, that was seven, I think, right? Maybe I said one twice. Next would be reason is the governing faculty, the force by which we come to understand the world. Facts yield, arguments yield, results which can be measured against the arguments to see if they're true, and if not, then revised. If so, then we're onto something and hold with it and continue measuring and ask someone else to do the same. Virtue is the, is the, is the purpose of life. Measurement of, uh, I'm missing one again. Virtue uh, is basically, I describe it as uh, improving the well-being of ourselves and uh, our, our families, our community, our culture, our, our species, our planet, through objective activities, such as improving, you know, clean, wa clean water, good food, clean energy, good sanitation, education available to, to a lifelong education, things like that. And next, I knew it, I'm missing one, Can't, don't know what it is, 10 is, uh, Willful time management, simply uh, taking conscious control of my time. Let me just go through these again and number them out and see if I've missed one, okay? So we've got atomic principle, principle of nature, this social principle, principle of maturity, the principle of temperance, agency and indifference, the best seat in the house, reason, virtue, and Willful time management. What the heck am I missing? I'm missing one. <gasps> Path of wildness. That's it. Path of wildness is ten, and then the um, um, willful time management. Path of wildness. Let's go back. Rewind back to ten. Path of wildness is my uh, the trick that I use to get myself out of stuck situations. So uh, I. Uh, I couple, I, I, when I'm in a situation in life where I'm stuck and I don't know which way to go, the first thing I do is if I have sufficient time, I, I gather as much information as I can in order to make a decision in a reasonable amount of time. That's a key thing, a reasonable amount of time. Don't wait too long, you can, you can, you can prepare all your life and let, you, let, let every opportunity pass. But get enough information to make a reasonable decision. If you don't have enough time, then use the information you've got and couple that with your gut instinct and go with it, um, and then uh, be ready to be, make a mistake. Understand that you're in a way jumping into the dark a little bit. But what I found is that the uh, activity of simply doing that in alone, of, of, of the activity of moving forward, even though we're in doubt, um, that alone will get us the momentum going. Even if we go the wrong way initially, we can correct our mo ourselves and get moving. I like to watch that that TV show, The uh, Highway Through Hell, about the uh, heavy record. Tr uh, tow truck operators up on the Coquihalla Highway up in Canada and going over this big mountain pass and what they say over and over for the uh, the big trucks going up that snowy pass is it's all about the momentum once they lose their momentum they're they're stuck uh, so it's all about the path of wildness is all about regaining your momentum through a force of will so that you can begin uh, moving forward in life even if it's initially perhaps the wrong direction at least you're at least you're back at it wow it's really starting to come down good thing I didn't ride the motorcycle so there, I covered all 11, a little bit out of order. There we go, but I got them. So now let's move on. In keeping with the uh, willful time management, there are two pieces to that. The first is the uh, today's uh, thought plan. There are four pieces. First, to collect my thoughts before breakfast, to compose my thoughts over lunch, record them before dinner, just in time to die before bedtime. Now let's go on to the uh, today's action plan. I've got a challenging day because um, 
there's not a lot of people. It's going to be a short week at the office. Short week at the office for me, just two days of work, but a lot of my coworkers are taking the whole week off for the Thanksgiving holiday. <clears throat> the challenge is that um, without a lot of people there, I, I need to move forward my projects, so I don't have a lot of people that I can work with. I need to stay on task. I have very deliberate goals that I, I, I can achieve. And I can use, I can actually lever, leverage this time in a very uh, beneficial way insofar as um, uh, get, making some forward progress. Although without the people that, without the team players and the decision makers, that's a little bit tricky because I, I need their input. So I have to uh, balance the one with the other, balance the fact that I can make progress without them with the fact that they're not around to help me make decisions. So I'll execute decisions where I can, create documents as necessary, continue moving forward. Tomorrow I've got a very important meeting uh, that I need to get the information right. I'm going to have to put my hat in hand a little bit and go to uh, some of my coworkers and, and ask for some suggestions about what information to get. Not because I don't, I have a list of the things that I need to know, but I don't want to make a mistake. It's, it's rare to get to talk to these, this, the, the person in particular that I'm after tomorrow. So I don't want to miss anything. And playing my hand, showing, asking others about it. You know what I'll do? I'll ask them this way. I'll say, here's what I think I need to determine for this meeting. These are from people that I respect. My, in Japanese, we would say my, uh, my senpai, the people who have gone before me. I will say, these are the things I need to, uh, to, to figure out. Uh, have, I, have I missed anything? And that way I'm not, I'm leading with my knowledge and giving them a chance to correct me, uh, show me where I've missed anything or maybe something wrong. Oh, suddenly the road's coming to a stop. <clears throat> so I stay on task. Work hard. Do not, do not get sidelined by the fact that there's not a lot of people at, the, at work. Um, it's very important. To, it's, it's a challenge because the place that I work gives us lots of opportunities to, uh, to how do you describe it? Kind of unsupervised. <laughs> no, that's not the right word. We're supervised. We have good supervision, but we're trusted. And I, I don't want to violate that trust. I'm not want to do that. I, oh, I'm, I'm not that type of person. I work very hard, and it's very important to me to work diligently, to not waste time. Um, and so I need, I'm going to focus on that and, uh, and make, make today a very good, productive day. When I leave work, I can do so with, with my head held high, that I've done a good job, that I've, I've, I've fronted my, uh, my ignorance and where, wherever it peaks up. And, and humbly accept criticism and uh, um, recommendations from others, well, all the while uh, doing my very best with what I know and uh, self-correcting and uh, proving along the way. And when I get home, I'm gonna go for that swim in the pool even though it's cold outside, and it's rainy, uh, <coughs> it's important to do. <clears throat> and I'm having some trouble with my computer at home, which is making it hard for me to upload videos. I'm not going to fret and fuss about that. I'll still make these videos and just simply store them away. Because it's not really the, whether or not I can upload them or not that makes the difference. It's the fact of making the videos is, is because I'm very selfish, you know. <laughs> I'm only after me. Because it's helping me to be a better person and uh, to help me refine it along the way. Although if I can find a way to upload it, I will. And finally, the Rotten Day Forecast. Setting the low bar of expectation, uh, the world, life can, the day can only get better from there. Uh, I'm going to falter in my objectives for today. I'm going to give in to the weaker side. Won't make myself proud at work. I won't do the best job that I can. My car is going to break down. I'm going to lose my job as a consequence of of my poor my poor performance, I lose respect to my coworkers because I'm not I'm not confronting my I'm not being I'm not comfortable with my ignorance and I choose to hide my ignorance with feigned uh, understanding and people don't respect that they can see right through that. When I come home, I'm going to crash the car. It won't be insured because I've forgotten to pay it. I'm going to meet people who are challenging to deal with. I'll get... I won't respond well to people online that contact me. And of course my uh, wife and daughter will die today.
while putting it at the end there it had, it had a strange effect putting that wife and daughter death thing at the end and I first started doing this the very first time I said those words I had it at the front and I, like somebody had slapped me in the face and then I got used to it and I just swapped it around and it's a lesser slap but still a slap it's a powerful formidable thing to remind myself of my wife and daughter dying today and I've noticed that it really makes a difference at home and during the course of the day texting them don't take them for granted be very grateful for them love them very much now I should try the same with my coworkers. Although, <laughs> and, my, and my friends if I had any uh, but I don't want to <laughs> wish if, if I say something like my coworkers are all going to die today the FBI will come banging on the door I don't mean it that way because it gets so easily and my experience on YouTube is such that people misunderstand these things so easily <laughs> you can say things in jest even and they, they get it you know the point of the death thing is to remind myself of the immediate of the immediate of the, of the failing immediate of life's immediate failure for any one of us and that these people that I enumerate as dying are simply people that I care about and that I want to have a better relationship with so if you hear me say say that you're gonna if you're one of those people and you hear me say it, it it's actually a flattery to you because you're one of the persons that I, I strive I want to take uh, I don't want to take for granted I want to care more about and I want to have a be improve my better relationship and and be be more connected with you I think I've said enough. It's time for the wrap up. 31, almost 32 minutes. Thanks for watching, everybody. Anybody, nobody. Have a have a good life. Take care.